This is Honors Algebra 2 Precalculus. We're doing 5.5 in Algebra 2, which is the quadratic formula. So you'll recall that in the last video of 5.4, we solved the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 uh, to get x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which is called the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is a useful way to find the roots or zeros of any quadratic equation. It is definitely worth memorizing because not all equations factor, and in a pinch, under stress, you really don't want to have to complete the square over and over to solve a bunch of problems. Um, uh, if you go on YouTube, you can find a quadratic formula song that is to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. I sing it to my son every night at bedtime because I am a nerd and I like math. Um, we're also going to learn how to write some simple programs in our calculators, including this one, which will be useful moving forward in math and science classes. So let's go ahead and do example one. So uh, we're going to go ahead and solve this by completing uh, by quadratic formula, which is the same as completing the square. So there are actually three ways to solve this. Um, one of them is going to be much better than the others, right? Uh, so this does factor, right? Um, if you wanted to factor, you could factor it, but we're going to use the quadratic formula to get some practice of how we use the quadratic formula. So, uh, so we have x squared plus 5x minus 14 equals 0. That means my a is 1, my b, the coefficient of x, is a 5, and my c is a negative 14. So the quadratic formula says x equals negative b, meaning the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus a 4 times a 1 times a negative 14 all over 2 times 1. So let's clean this up a little bit, right? So uh, here I have a 25, right? And then this is going to be a negative times a negative, right? Uh, and that should be a 56. So in here, I'm going to get 25 plus 56, right? Um, which should be 81. So I get that this is a negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 81, which we can make a 9 in a second, all over 2. It's going to be a negative 5 plus or minus a 9, all over 2. So my two answers are either negative 5 plus 9 over 2, right, which would be 4 over 2 or 2, or x equals negative 5 minus 9 over 2, which is a negative 14 over 2 or a negative 7. So Solving this using the quadratic formula, I get that my answers are a positive 2 and a negative 7. Now, I want to point out, so that's that's the way you're asked to solve this, but just to show you, because those are nice, happy integer numbers, this actually does factor. If you were to factor, you would get an x plus 7 and an x minus 2, and you could FOIL that to check uh, that if you were to FOIL, uh, your first would be x squared, your outer would be a negative 2x, your inner would be a plus 7x, so there's your plus 5x, and your last would be a minus 14. So sure enough, you get the same answers uh, if you solved by factoring that you get if you solve using the quadratic formula. You'd also get the same answers if you inexplicably chose to complete the square and then solve, because b basically that's what the quadratic formula is. All right, so uh, I want you to go ahead and try and p1 using the quadratic formula. Again, this does factor, but I want you to get used to how the quadratic formula works because if you can't do the quadratic formula when you have nice happy numbers, it's going to be a lot harder to do it when the numbers are ugly. So go ahead and pause me if you don't want uh, me to do it before you. So my a is 1, my b is negative 7, and my c is 6. So x equals negative b will be a positive 7 because it's the opposite of negative 7 plus or minus the square root of b squared is a positive 49 because when you square a negative 7 you get a positive 9, uh, 49 minus 4 a and c all over a 2 times that a which is a 1. So that's a 7 plus or minus the square root of, well this is 49 minus 24 which should give me a 25, right, all over 2. So x is 7 plus or minus a 5 over 2, which means that there are two ways this could go. x is a 7 plus a 5 over 2, which would be 12 over 2 or 6, right? Or x is a 7 minus a 5 over 2, which would be 2 over 2, which is 1. So my two answers are x equals 1 and 6. Now, if you'd chosen to factor, I promise that this does factor. Right? If you factored this, it would be x minus 1 times x minus 6. And you could FOIL to check that that does, in fact, give you this minus 7x on the inside and this plus 6 on the outside, which, sure enough, proves the same point. I get the same answers. Right? But again, uh, I want you to practice using the quadratic formula with things that factor because when you get to the ones that don't factor, you're going to need to know how to use the quadratic formula. All right, so uh, 
We're going to use the quadratic formula to solve this. We're going to have exact solutions, which means there will be square roots, and we're going to give the approximate answer to the thousandth because we're going to ignore your textbook's tendency to use tenth, which is silly. Uh, you should go to the thousandth because that's what the AP wants. Now what's tricky about this question is that you can't use the quadratic formula in the form this is in currently. Right? You need to move everybody to one side. Now I like my leading coefficient to be positive, so I'm going to move everybody to the left hand side. And now my a is 4, and my b is 3, and my c is negative 8. So my x is going to be negative b, which would be a negative of a positive 3, right? plus or minus the square root of b squared is a 9, minus a 4 times a 4 times a negative 8. So what's going to happen in here is I'm going to get a 9 plus a 64, right? Oh, that's not a 64. Sorry, I take it back. My brain. Oh, come on. Where's the eraser? That's not the eraser. Hang on. Sometimes my brain does stupid things. My brain did 4 plus 4. 4 times 4 is 16, right? Uh, times 8 should be double of 64, so that should be a buck 28, right? And it's positive because those are both negatives. All over uh, 2 times a, which will be an 8. So I get that x is a negative 3 plus or minus. Uh, so 9 plus the 128 should be a root 137 all over uh, 8. All right. Now, 137 doesn't simplify um, at all. I can walk through and see if there are any perfect squares that go into it. Um, but 137 is not divisible by 2 because it's not even. It's not divisible by 3 because if you add the digits, it's not a multiple of 3. Uh, it's not divisible by any other even number because 2 didn't work. Uh, it's not divisible by 5 because it doesn't end in a 0 or a 5. Uh, we can rule out 6 because it's even. Uh, we can rule out 7 because you can actually try and divide and it's not a multiple of 7. Uh, you can rule out 8 because it's even, 9 because 3 didn't work, 10 because it's even. Uh, it is not a multiple of 11 uh, because 11 squared is a 121, and you can go ahead and, and get 132 from that. It's not 11. Um, and since that's bigger than halfway, right, uh, like this thing is slightly smaller than 12 squared. So if you can get up to 12 and not have any factors, there aren't going to be any factors. So that's it. This is my exact answer, right? Those are my two answers. Now when I'm asked to approximate my answers, x is going to be approximately, and then what I'm going to type in is negative 3 plus the square root of 137, right, divided by 8. So that's actually equals, and then we're going to go ahead and put an approximate, right? So x is approximately. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to do a negative 3 minus this root 137 divided by 8, and that's going to give me another approximate answer, right? So if we go ahead and put that in the calculator, which I'll pull up in a sec, right? So ignore that. That's old stuff. All right, so negative 3 plus the square root of 137, close the parentheses, divided by 8. Okay, so that's my first answer. I'm lazy, so I'm going to take a screenshot of that. And then if I hit second enter, I don't have to retype everything. All I need to do is go change the sign in front of the 137 square root. So, all right, and then I can go ahead and get this one. So if we drag these two on here, so there's the first one. Oh, sorry, that's the second one, my bad. There's the second one, and there's the first one, okay? Um, so when we round or truncate, right, we're going to round or truncate to three places. So, um, so I'm going to go to the thousands place, and if I cut right here, it doesn't matter if I round or truncate, it's going to be the same answer, right? Uh, and here, if I round or truncate, it doesn't matter if I cut that right there, it's going to be the same answer. Okay, and those are my approximate answers. So notice the exact answer has the root in it. The approximate answer is what happens when I get this decimal that I am rounding or truncating. All right, so you're going to go ahead and try a P2. Same idea, pause me if you don't want me to do it without you. All right, so first thing I have to do is add this 3 to the other side, right? Because I need to make sure everything's equal to 0 to use the quadratic formula, just like when I factored. This gives me my a, b, and c, so my x is going to be negative b, which will be a, a positive 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared will be a positive 36 minus 4 times six, uh, 2 times 3, right? a times c, all over a 2 times 2, right? So this is going to be a 36 minus a 24, which means it's a 12. So I'm going to get x is 6 plus or minus root 12 all over 4. Now root 12 actually does simplify because a 12 is a 4 times a 3. So uh, you could take out that root 4 and make this a 6 plus or minus 2 root 3 all over 4. 
Um, because all three, uh, all three of these things have two as a factor, you could actually further simplify by factoring out a two and you get three plus or minus root three all over two. So that's the best version of the exact answer. Now, that said, you could also, I mean, this is also an exact answer, but it's not simplified. So if you were looking at multiple choice answers, it would likely not be simplified. Um, when you find your approximate answer, right, you're going to do 3 plus root 3 over 2. And the other one is going to be 3 minus root 3 all over 2, right? And that's going to give you your approximate x values, right? You're going to type those in your calculator. So if we pull the calculator up, that's not the calculator. There we go. My bad. Okay, so if we type this thing into our calculator, right? Um, now, you could even be kind of lazy because I just did one. I'm going to hit second enter, and I'm just going to go up and change the values. Um, oh, it won't let me. Sorry, my bad. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change the values and make this a positive 3 uh, plus... I'm just going to delete and make this a root 3 and make this all over a 2. I'm going to hit enter. Right, and then I could hit second enter and then just change the plus to a minus and hit enter. And so there's both of my answers. Um, we'll go ahead and take a shot of those and drag them over. Cool. So if we drag these onto here for a sec, right, um, what we end up getting is that uh, this one is approximately a 2.366 because, again, if you round or truncate, it's going to be the same. But then for this one, uh, sorry, right here, it's going to be a different answer depending on if you round or truncate. If you truncate, you get 6.33. If you round, you get, or sorry, 0.633. If you uh, round, you get 0.634. Either of those would be right. Okay, so those are my approximate answers to the nearest thousandth. All right, cool. Moving on. Let's do a word problem. Example three. After watching a home improvement show, the Wilkerson's decide to build a patio along two sides of their home. As shown here, the patio will have the same width along both sides. In that case, the width of the patio is X, right? Uh, find the width of the patio the Wilk uh, if the Wilkerson's have enough material to cover a surface area of 650 square feet. You can use the quadratic formula to solve. So here's the idea. Um, this piece of their deck is X feet wide and 20 feet five feet long. So, so the area of their deck, right, is that chunk, which is 25 times x, plus this chunk is x feet wide and 30 feet long, which means 30x, right, plus this little thing that is the width x by the width x, which would be an x squared. So the area, which we know is 650 square feet, right, is 25x plus 30x plus x squared. So, we're saying that x squared plus 55x minus 650 equals 0, and you're solving for x. So your a is a 1, your b is the 55, and your c is a negative 65. So you're going to get that x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, and I'm just going to write that as a 55 squared because I'm not going to clean that up right now in my head, minus 4 times a 1 times a negative 650 all over a 2 times a 1, right? Um, so I can clean up the inside of that root if we want. Um, let's see. Um, there we are. Just looking for the calculator. All right, cool. Now, I can clean up that, that inside if I want. I can do 55 squared. Uh, it's going to end up being a plus 4 times 650, right, because it's minus a negative. And I can clean that up. Uh, and I'm going to get 5625, and I could square root that and get 75. So it turns out that this entire thing is a 5625, which means we get that this is a negative 55 plus or minus a 75 all over 2. So my x is either a negative 55 plus a 75 over 2, which would be 20 over 2 or 10, or my x is going to be a negative number, which doesn't make very much sense, right? Uh, so this would be a negative 130 over 2, which would be a negative 65, and that makes zero sense. So this doesn't make sense in the context of the problem. You can't have a negative width. So based on the quadratic formula, uh, the width would be 10 feet. Uh, so that's my width, right? Um, now, you could have also figured this out by factoring. Anytime you get a quadratic formula problem that ends with nice, happy integer numbers, or, or I should say rational numbers, like any number that doesn't have a root anymore, it means you could have solved it by factoring. And sure enough, 
If you'd gone back up here, some of you might have spotted that this is an x minus 10 and an x plus 65, and that that would give you that negative 650. And sure enough, that gives you the two answers of 10 and negative 65, where 10 is the only logical answer in a word problem talking about width. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about a P3 construction. The Wilkerson's now have enough material to cover a surface area of 700 square feet. Uh, find, then the equation becomes the same equation we had, but with the 700, uh, find the uh, width of the patio. And again, they said nearest tenth, but let's go ahead and say thou thou thousandths, sorry, thousandth of a foot um, from this equation. So we're going to do the smart thing and, and go with three places. Notice that if they're giving you the hint that they want you to go to the nearest uh, decimal value, like to a specific decimal value, then that means that you're not going to get an exact answer. So go ahead and try and P P3, right, with this equation. So, so that's my, I subtract the 700 to get an A that is one my B is 55, my C is negative 700, right? So X is going to be negative 55 plus or minus the square root of 55 squared minus 4 times 1 times a negative 700 all over a 2 times 1, right? Um, and if we go ahead and pull the calculator up, right, the difference is if I hit second enter twice, it's not a 650 anymore, it's a 700. Right, so I get that this is a 5825. So this is going to be a 5825 inside the root. So my x is going to be a negative 55 plus this root all over 2. Or it's going to be a negative 55 minus this root, but I can cross off this answer right away. Because if you think about it, um, this is a negative number, and you're also subtracting a positive number. So this has to net a negative answer and a negative width doesn't make sense, right? So, so the reason I'm mentioning that in this case you can cross that one off is a negative width wouldn't make sense. So if I go ahead and pull up my calculator, uh, and if I want, I can, uh, so I'm just going to type 55, sorry, negative 55, my bad. Negative 55 uh, plus the square root of 5825. Right, divide that, so hit enter, and then divide that entire thing by 2, and I get that this is a 10.660 or 10.661, right? So uh, 10.660 feet or 661 feet, <coughs> depending if you round or truncate, okay? Cool. All right, so uh, I believe that's it for this video. Yep.